welcome back to Nebraska Football Now. I'm your host, Andy Klassen, joined once again by Jake Bartecki, our Husker insider. Jake, once again, smiles all across Husker Nation. Yeah, it's hard to be upset with a 2-0 and start and a dominating performance yeah. against Colorado. Um, Nebraska's done everything anyone could have hoped for to this point in the season. You were there. I've heard reports that that was as loud as Memorial Stadium has ever been. What can you say about the atmosphere, the noise factors? My brothers were there. They were saying it was crazy. It really was. Uh, I, you know, I haven't covered Husker football as long as some people in that media group, but some people are saying it's the loudest they've ever heard it in over 20 years. And, you know, I've been covering Nebraska for a handful of years, and it's definitely the loudest I've ever heard it. The loudest I heard it on Saturday night was Tommy Hill's pick six. I don't think that was <laughs> the loudest I heard it. You know, yeah. Colorado was backed up inside their own one. You've got all the sound coming down on you from that back stands behind the yeah. end zone. That was the loudest I had, I had ever heard that place. Uh, it, was an out, it was an incredible atmosphere. I mean, it yeah. really put college football, you know, it gave, painted a perfect picture of what a home game's like in college football. And a home game of what Nebraska fans have been craving for, what the coaching staff has been talking about, their belief system. And talking about Tommy Hill, that was one of many splash highlight plays that the defense made. Let's expand on that right now and talk about that performance because that was the question mark I think nationally a lot of people had. How would the black shirt defense, you know, endure the type of offense that Colorado was bringing to our house? I thought the black shirts played fairly well. Matt Rule's post-game interview, I think, summed it up perfectly. Everybody had been talking all week about mm -hmm. their stars, Colorado stars, the guys you just named. Yeah. And he said, look, our defense is a star. And I think my own, myself, what I said is if Nebraska really is this top five defense in the Big Ten mm -hmm. and a top 15 defense nationally again, go out and show it. You know, yeah. don't. And my take was don't allow Colorado to score more than 20 points. They only allowed 10. You know, yeah. and, and when they allowed that one touchdown, it was off a blocked punt, right? So yeah. look at it this way. Nebraska's pass rush was outstanding. We talked about that on our show before, mm -hmm. about Nebraska possibly having one of the best defensive lines in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. They sacked Shadur Sanders six times. They forced him into an interception. They forced a fumble. But they also had 22 quarterback hurries. And this is the number I like the most from that game. Pro football focus had Nebraska having 19 quarterback hurries with just three or four. That is outstanding because that means you've yeah. got more guys, more linebackers dropping back in coverage. And a perfect example of that was the pick six by Tommy Hill. Yeah. The designed route there, I believe, from the film was Shadir Sanders was looking for Travis Hunter over the middle. Mm -hmm. Bullock comes over and shuts off that route, so he goes to check down number two, and Tommy was right there to pick it off. He read it perfectly. And that's another example of rushing three or four, how yeah. many more benefits it gives you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I just felt the uh, I was at a big old party, you know, sure. a lot of friends and family there and seeing those balloons fly like the good old days, it just it brought back so many memories like, oh, this is a game we can win. We look good on good at early. Yep. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about the defense. Let's shift over to the offense. The reason those balloons get released. And I think we have to start with the running backs. Yeah. Uh, Dante Dowdell showed out. He's obviously the feature back as of right now. And, you know, Coach Rule talked about um, why he's there, and, and uh, you got a chance to actually talk to yep. uh, the young man after the game. Let's, let's listen to a little bit of that. 17 carries for 77 yards and two touchdowns tonight for Dante Dowdell. Dante, first of all, take me through what that game was like, and you got the place jumping with that first touchdown. Had to be a fun experience. It was just nice. You know, the old line did with the front, open up some holes, you know, and my eyes got big, you know, I just tried to pull my wheel on defense and make things happen. And Coach Ron Brown, you know, in that running back room, have done an unbelievable job developing him. Like when he first got here, he hadn't played a lot of football. Uh, you know, trying to learn how we do things, our process. I mean, we try to do really hard things, and it's not for everybody. So for him to be able to adapt to how we work every day and what we do and then develop his skill set as a running back, you know, I think EJ did a really nice job of c continually and still ongoing of developing him. So now you've had a chance to kind of consume that and, and look back at that. What are your thoughts over uh, the Dowdell and the impact he's had thus far to this season? Well, I think when you look at the spring game, people weren't blown away by mm -hmm. Dante Dowdell. Well, he hurt himself. I believe he had an ankle problem during the spring game that kind of hindered him through the rest of that. And that was really the only time the public and, yeah. and a lot of us had had a chance to see him do work. 
I thought he was outstanding. I, I think yeah. he's been outstanding. He's had three touchdowns in two games and, you know, 77 yards on Saturday, which isn't, you know, it's a great showing. Mm -hmm. It's not blow anybody away Heisman numbers, but when you're working in four total running backs, that gets the yeah. job done. Nebraska ran the ball uh, for 4.3 yards per carry against the Buffaloes. That'll work, I mean, against yeah. any team in the Big Ten. And we talked about this last week. You have to put together some long drives because Colorado has struggled stopping the run. Yeah. Their offensive line had trouble holding up against Nebraska's pass rush. So take the ball out of their hands and, and drain down that clock. And we saw them do that. And Dylan Raiola, who I'm sure we'll talk about, <laughs> really didn't have to do much, right? I mean, yeah. he just had to kind of be a game manager. And that's fine, especially when you have such success on the ground. On the ground. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't just Odell. Like you, you mentioned, Ryola there. Uh, a lot of players in their press conference actually talked a little bit about Barney and how he's this close. And we saw it on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, one of his darn big penalties. <laughs> <laughs> one of those big plays called back by penalty. Uh, let's cut to a little bit of a, a, some snippets here of some players talking about the potential that Barney has. Yeah, I didn't know Jacory actually until I committed, and then I found out he was going to be my roommate. Uh, and then we started started connecting and being close. But um, ever since then, I I knew he had the work ethic. I knew he had this talent. I knew he had the speed. It was just a matter of the chemistry and understanding each other. And, um, I mean, that dude's special, um, just like all our guys in our room. He's, he's so talented. He's super fast. Uh, he's very confident, too. And it, it shows the way he plays. And, yeah, I think he's just going to continue to be that way. Um, as he, you know, gets stronger and, and bigger, fills out, like, he's going to be a dominant player. I mean, he's just so fast and dynamic. Uh, the thing about Ja'Cory uh, is he loves playing football, and that's what you try to recruit to. Uh, like, he generally loves to practice. Like, he always has a smile on his face. It's continually recess for him when he's out there on the football field, whether it be a game or whether it be in practice. So I think that that and his, and his ability and his ball skills – on his speed, I think that just you know, allows him to be a special player. And he, hopefully he only improves each week. All right, Jake, now that we've heard that and you're seeing, you're kind of seeing this team mentality come together, right? Rule and the coaches, they've been preaching about it. It's one thing to hear from the coaching staff. Now you're hearing it from the players on the field, in the press conference, and talking about guys that, you know, haven't been in the limelight saying, we can't wait till this guy gets going. What do you think that's – where does that come from? And it's got to be a positive sign for this team as a whole. It shows a ton of depth. I mean, because yeah. Ja'Cory Barty Jr., I think you look back to, to training camp and, and leading up to the season, he was getting talked about and people knew he was going to be a factor. Mm -hmm. I don't think people thought he was going to uh, be this much of an impact player. Again, his numbers don't really show it from Colorado because he had some of those long plays called back by penalties. But I, I think moving forward, obviously, Nayor and Banks are going to be your two main wide receivers. But I think you can get Barney going on jet sweeps. You can use him yeah. out of the backfield. And we've already seen his ability and his explosiveness on those plays. There's short passes where he was able to cut it upfield yeah. and get behind the secondary. I think he's a great option for the Huskers. Uh, and following that up, we started to talk about the young trigger man, our quarterback, Rayola, boy, has he lived up to the hype. Once again, comes out to the crowd, greets the crowd. Yep. <laughs> Looks a lot like Patrick Mahomes, He's right? The He's playing the part. Uh, being kind of a football junkie or a nerd, you could say, my favorite plays of his is when he goes through his progressions and he hits that third check down. I just, what were your uh, impressions of overall of that Colorado game from our young quarterback? Yeah, I mean, he didn't have to do much, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Nebraska ran the ball, and that seemed like that was the game plan, which is fine because I, I look at it this way. That's a huge spot for a young quarterback. I mean, there's all yeah. the Mahomes comparisons, and there's all the national sure. spotlight. When you have the ability to take the ball out of a young quarterback's hands like that and not put him into pressure situations, mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. Now, I will say this. I wish we saw him throw the ball a little bit more than we did. Mm -hmm. um, I think my favorite play of that game, obviously you mentioned the, the third check down, but I liked when he rolled out of the pocket and was able to see Jalen Lloyd break his route and catch that ball down inside the five-yard line. Down the comeback. That was, yeah, that was an outstanding play um, because Dylan Raiola was able to extend it. And I think that's what Nebraska's missed uh, over the last few years is they don't really have a quarterback that can extend plays mm -hmm. and then break from their number one option. Right. Raiola's been able to do that, and it's shown 75% completion through the first few games. Turn the page, right? You know, 1-0, uh, and oh, <laughs> as running back Dowdell said, that's their goal every week. They got a talented, sneaky, talented 
uh, you and I team, Northern Iowa, the Panthers, they always put together a squad. I never overlook them because, you know, I kind of grew up in this area and, yeah. and I know those guys. And, hey, uh, they've knocked off Iowa. They've knocked off Iowa State in the past. Yeah. I don't think Nebraska's in a spot where they can take this team lightly. No, Northern Iowa 2-0 and on the year. They beat Valparaiso and then St. Thomas of Minnesota for their first two wins. St. Thomas was a close game. They won by a touchdown. What I think Nebraska is going to be challenged with this, this weekend is they're going to see an offense do something that they haven't seen yet this season. UTEP mm. and Colorado were very spread out the offense and, and, and kind of not quite air raid, but very spread, right? Yeah. This is a Northern Iowa team that averages 250 yards on the ground. Ty Edwards, 6'4", 230-pound running back. Mm. I think Tony White and the Black shirts are going to see a team run right at them for the first time, which we haven't seen in the past, uh, at least not this season. So Nebraska is obviously a top rushing defense. They've shown that. They've gotten a lot of that on sacks. I'm very curious to see yeah. how they do against a, a kind of ground and pound, run the ball right at you football team. And I think Tony White said it best in one of his press conferences where he said, this is a good tune-up for Big Ten ball because teams yeah. like Rutgers and Illinois that do like to go to the ground game, they're going to see that early. Kind of wrapping things up here, what are your overall impressions? The Huskers are 2-0 and for the first time in a very long time. Uh, the rankings just came out. So many things are heading in the right direction. In years past, this is where the Huskers have tripped, you know, had to pick themselves yeah. back up. What does Nebraska need to do to just kind of stay on track here? Well, I mean, the first thing is I think Nebraska's taking care of business. They've yeah. done everything you could have asked of them to this point. They're 2-0. and Did they have a great second half against Colorado? No. Yeah. But they also won by 18 points. And I guarantee you, mm -hmm. we recorded our first episode in July, and somebody yeah. said you would hold Colorado to 10 points and you'd win by 18 we would have taken and ran. Oh, so yeah. right now, I think Nebraska just needs to continue, and this is what every coach and every player has said, to go 1-0 and each week. Mm -hmm. Continue to improve. You know, last week the penalties were a problem on offense. Let's cut down on the penalties this week. That would be a good sign of improvement. Let's continue to see yeah. Nebraska average 4.3 yards per carry or even inflate that number a little bit. Get better each and every week and go 1-0. and I know I sound like a coach, but that's, <laughs> I, I think they're completely yeah. right with what they say in the press conferences about how they need to get better. Well, speaking of coaches and the rankings, we have a, a couple of quotes here from Nash Hutmaker and Coach Rule talking about those rankings. Let's take a listen. It's cool to have that little number by our by our name, but I mean that, that doesn't mean nothing. You know, if we don't go out there and perform, it doesn't mean anything. So we're not we're not worried about um, having that number by our name. We're just worried about there and going out there. And you come here to have high expectations, right? You come here to play in big games. You come here to play in front of that crowd. You know, you. So you get all the reasons why you come here. So, you know, we expect, we expect to be ranked, but whatever it is, 23rd, 24th, that's not where we want to end up. So, um, you know, go one and know each week and see what happens. Well, all right, Jake. I tend to agree with the coach and the player on this one. Yes, it's nice and it's fun to be ranked, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And I really appreciate the honesty from head coach Matt Rule. Yeah, uh, we're ranked. We, we expect to be ranked, and we're only ranked 23rd right now. We don't want to end at 23rd. We want to be higher than that. What were your impressions? Right, and I think he believes the standard for, for what he wants the program to be is better than a yeah. team that's just in the top 25. Again, though, I don't know if you would have told me at the beginning of the season Nebraska would be ranked after week two. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have believed you. I mean, I was a little surprised yeah. they even got ranked after the Colorado game. Yeah. Great that they did. First time since 2019 that they've been ranked. So that's obviously really cool. And first time since 2016 they've been 2-0. and But I, I agree. It's, it's what Nash Hutmaker said. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. Nebraska just wants to play well. I guarantee you if they were 2-0 and and they were unranked, I don't think yeah. anybody would have any other opinion of we just want to play well, we're happy we're 2-0. and uh, Keep winning, right? Yeah. Climb those rankings and see what happens. Well, what's your predictions heading into week three here? Are we going to stay on track as a program or is that slip up going to happen? Because it, it, whether it was in the Early 2000s, middle 2000s, or some other era, it seems that Nebraska just hasn't been able to get out of its own way. Is this the game, or are you seeing a little bit more, something different this year with the Huskers? I think Nebraska will be okay against Northern Iowa. I think they have better players and, and nothing against the, the FCS schools, but I think Nebraska's got everything in their favor. Um, it's a night game at home. It'll be a loud stadium, probably the most hostile environment Northern Iowa's played in in a few years. And if Nebraska keeps doing everything they've been doing, strong defense, good pass rush, continuing to run the football, not to mention Dylan Riola hasn't turned the ball over yet. If he continues that, I don't see any problems with Big Red. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. Jake, thank you for your time and sharing all that wonderful information with us. You bet. 
For News Channel Nebraska, I'm Andy Klassen, and I want to thank you for joining us on another Nebraska Football Now.